This video is proudly supported by Glasswire. For more information, check the link below. What's up guys, CP Moddy here, back with another video, and when it comes to old video cards, one of the leading causes for people to actually upgrade to brand new video cards, other than really not getting the performance that they want, is failed coolers. Now back when I worked at a PC repair store, I repaired more video cards with broken fan assemblies than any other problems with video cards. I replaced hundreds if not thousands of video cards that had seized fans, cooler assemblies that were falling apart, or whatever cause of the video card, rather than video cards just not performing to what the users wanted. So when it comes to performance, uh, cooling is definitely an issue here. And with many people out there running quite old cards, as much as lots of people like to think that everybody's got a 10 series or everybody's got a 900 series, the fact of the matter is there's still quite a lot of old video cards kicking around today, meaning a lot of people are getting closer and closer to the day when the cooler finally gives out. And what happens when the cooler gives out? Can we just really strap PC case fans to a video card and get same or better performance? Well today, we're going to find that exactly out. Now today we're taking a look at an old GTX 660. Now if you know my personal rig, I run two of them. No, none of them are broken, but this has actually come off a computer that came to me recently with overheating issues. The system was overheating because the actual fans on the video card had completely seized up. Now back in 2013, this WinForce card was released and that's about five years ago, and unfortunately the owner of this card never did a single ounce of servicing. I believe they just got the computer, put it under their desk with a nice big mesh intake, and vacuumed the intake once every year or so. So this video card literally got no service, which made the fans, well, basically, well, die and seize up and have a lot of issues. Sure, if you manually move them with your finger, the fans kind of moved around with a lot of sort of uh, force required, but all in all, the card finally gave up. Now, the actual core itself, the outputs, the whole internals of the card work perfectly fine. It's just the cooler assembly that is no longer working, and that is where we're going to be doing some DIY stuff today. And this is actually a pretty common cause. A lot of ticking noises, some squealing, and then a lack of performance, and all of a sudden your video card is dead. Now, for this video, I wanted to test more than just strapping some fans like this to our video card. What if we went ahead and grabbed a server fan and ran this guy at full tilt, could we get same or better performance? I also too tested a single fan, dual fan configuration. I did a number of tests uh, to see what we could actually get and if you ran into this situation, what you should do at home. Now, also too, one more thing I do want to point out before we start getting into the test and the methodology is this guy was and still is an open shroud type cooler. Now, if you do have a blow style card, you would technically, I guess you would see less success uh, than what we would experience here today because blower cards, generally speaking, have a lot smaller area when it comes to the fin array. If we pop up this image right here, we see sure there's definitely enough fin array to keep it cool, but when it comes to actually comparing it to an open shroud fin array, we do see there is a lot more surface area and when it comes to surface area, that is definitely key for cooling down your video card. So if you do have a blow style cooler, I do recommend just going on eBay and picking up a brand new little blower fan and sticking that in there. You're going to see a lot better performance uh, than strapping a big fan to it. But unfortunately, we don't have a blower style card on hand today. So if you want to see that video, let me know down below. Anyway, with that being said, I went ahead and raided my fan bucket, which has all different things from massive 200 mil ones to server blower fans to get a bunch of fans available to see what you could also do do at home. Now, I attach the fans to the uh, video card with a bunch of tape and also zip ties. If we take a look at some B-roll shots, uh, yeah, there's a lot of zip ties being used here, just the old school kind of link them all together and it worked pretty much fine there. And I also too, for the fans, use a low uh, power adapter little thing. This came with a Noctua fan, it's got two little resistors in it, so it takes one uh, single four pin cable and splits it out and also two lowers the fan RPM, so we can have quite operation with our fan setup. So. We'll stand this guy back up and let's get into some testing. So first and foremost, we do need to get some control numbers. So we grabbed my GTX 660 in my personal rig over there and ran some standard benchmarks. I ran a few games and also to some core burning to warm up the video card to see what our min and max temperatures are. And taking a look at our control numbers right here, pretty much what we would expect from a GTX 660. Then first up, we went ahead and used the two fan design. Now this is something I've seen a lot uh, on websites, forums and all that kind of stuff where people just strap two big 
big 120 mil fans on there, so I grabbed two 120 mil fans. Both of these are static pressure, although one of them looks more like an airflow fan, but uh, both of them are designed to be static pressure, which is exactly what you want, as you want or pressure going into the fins rather than just an airflow style case fan. So with that being said, we then went ahead and run it. Now at this point, I was not exactly convinced. Mainly taking a look at these shots, we see above and below the actual fin array, there's quite a bit of spacing and I was worried the air was just gonna pressurize there and sort of fall out the edges. And especially on this second fan here, where there's a lot of overhang, I was worried that a lot of the air would just fly out the back and make no difference at all. But let's take a look at the performance and whoa, what we actually got on average 10 degrees or better in terms of cooling performance. Even though the actual fans themselves were spinning on the sort of lower setting around 600 to 700 RPM, which was way lower than the 1300 RPM that the GTX 660 runs at for the Wind Force Edition. And under load, the Wind Force GTX 660 screamed really loudly with the fans maxed out to keep it at a reasonable temperature, whereas this guy just sort of hummed along at uh, 600 to 700 RPM. Now gaming wise, FPS was not affected because these particular cards don't boost up anymore if they're in better cooling situations. So for example on the new video cards, if you get better cooling, better power, generally speaking you'll also to get better performance. But um, in these particular old cards they just ran cooler which was really nice to see. Meaning you could probably turn up those overclocks a little bit more if you were into doing that. Moving on to just a single fan configuration, I went ahead and put the fan directly in the center of the card as I kind of figured that would distribute airflow across as best as possible. I reran the test and whilst the temperatures were okay in some games I did find them to be a little bit warmer uh, than the stock fan configuration so a single fan definitely keeps it cool but it isn't exactly as good as running two fans like what we got here. However, again, with that being said, taking a look at the gaming FPS and all the other numbers that we did run here today, uh, there wasn't exactly any sort of performance differences because, again, performance difference on this particular generation was never affected by how cool or how hot it ran. Sure, if it ran too hot, it would uh, thermal throttle, but just because it's running cooler doesn't mean more performance. Then we went ahead and swapped out our open style kind of cooling to some blower style cards. Now, this guy is actually off of a server cooler. The idea of this, it would sit on top of the cooler like so, it would blow air out the back of the server and it would suck all the air in from underneath. Now these guys run at a minimum of 2,000 RPM and I believe this guy can go up to I think it's five or six thousand RPM. It doesn't, I thought it said on the back but it doesn't say on the back but it gets really really loud and moves a whole ton of air. Now I went ahead and taped it to the back of the card and actually taped off the fin array so it forced the air through the actual card itself. In my mind it kind of made it like a blower style card where you kind of got that shroud on the side to force the air from the back to the front of the card in theory that would work so we went ahead and did it and ran the numbers and actually it seems to be getting ever so slightly better temperatures than stock. Sure it wasn't as good as our two big 120mm fans but definitely they were slightly better than stock fans. One thing that I didn't bring up though is that noise of this cooler because this is essentially a server fan running at 2000 RPM at the slowest it still was a very noisy setup so we got this horrible server noise and honestly after five minutes I just wanted to chuck the card out the window because it was so annoying. So sure, the blow fan did definitely work for us and take a look at those numbers, gaming performance was fine, uh, but to be quite honest with you guys, I would never run a server fan to cool my video card because sure, it moved a lot of air across the card, that's how we kept it cool. It was just an absolute nightmare because it made so much noise. So TLDR time of this video. Can you use regular case fans provided they're static pressure fans on your GPU? And simply put, Absolutely yes, and in most cases, as long as it's an open shroud cooler, you should be seeing similar, if not better, cooling performance out of these guys at lower RPMs, thanks to the fact that both well, their bigger fans moving more air, which is really nice to see. Also too, you do need to keep into consideration what kind of card you have, as long as it has plenty of uh, fin arrays to actually, well, cool down the card, because surface area is definitely key when it comes to these guys, uh, you should have a decent experience. However, people with blower style fans may not see the same amount of performance increase, mainly because blower fans, generally speaking, have a cooler design for air moving across the card rather than being forced down. But that doesn't mean you can't go ahead and grab, I guess, a blower style fan and strap it to your card. On average though, with this kind of a setup, I was able to see around 10 degrees Celsius or better temperatures with RPMs around 
1600 RPM which was really nice to see and also too really nice on the ears compared to the 1300 RPM that the stock cooler on this guy does have. Now yes on newer video cards they do have things like zero fan mode and this won't be able to support a zero fan mode but they were basically silent at that and I would be happy to run them all day if I did need to. GPU boost also too wasn't affected on my particular unit because it is an older video card however if you do have something out of the newer generation of video cards cooling it down by 10 degrees can actually see things like core clocks and also to boost speeds increase thanks to the fact that new video cards take advantage of these cooler situations so definitely if you have a newer video card this would be a very nice mod and if you were to actually spend some money and buy some nice Noctua fans and buy a video card that has some really big fin arrays, you could actually be seeing way better performance if you just strap those Noctuas straight to the actual video card and just bypass the cooler even if it wasn't dead already. And you would see better results all around, even higher synthetics. And again, 10 degrees Celsius is definitely really nice, seeing that all we did was unscrew four bolts to take the old cooler off and uh, zip tie some new coolers on. So I'd have to say this is definitely a successful thing, but uh, let me know down in that comment sections what you think. Is a dead video card cooler a sign just to get yourself a brand new video card, or is it a sign for a new DIY project? Let me know down in that comment sections below. If you want to pick up some of the fans that we did use today or grab yourself some sweet Noctuas, you can find them linked down in the description box. And I guess if if you want to pick up a 660, I'll try and leave some links down there, but they are quite old at this point. Either way, thanks all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.